Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and um, this is a video on bond and molecular polarity. Okay, polarity arises when you have uneven sharing of electrons and charge charges are created. Okay, um, specifically, there's bond polarity that we can look at, and there's molecular polarity. Okay, and if we're looking at bond polarity, we have to determine the electronegativity differences. Um, we have our reference tables, so we're not gonna panic. When we check in bond polarity, we simply look at the electronegativities, we do a subtraction, and uh, make a term determination from there. Um, in our journey, we've gone from valence electrons to dot structures. We've then gone from dot structures to shapes, okay? And then we've gone from shapes to polarity, because shapes help determine whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar. So you see everything is um, foundational. You have to know what valence electrons are. You have to know how to do dot structures. Then you have to know how to draw your shapes properly and know the names. And in turn, um, the determination of the shapes will help you figure out whether the molecule is polar or nonpolar. Okay. In terms of bond polarity, right, when we have un even sharing, okay, and, and the electronegativity difference, we will create partial charges. Now, the partial charges, we discussed this in class already, is represented by a Greek symbol, delta. Okay, I'm not drawing it perfectly there, but it, it's something looking like that. Okay, and it can either be positive or negative. Now, remember, we said electronegativity is the ability for an atom to pull or attract electrons towards itself in a chemical bond. For example, so we use a classic example, we'll use water, H2O. Now oxygen is right here, and we have two hydrogens right here, okay? Now what we do, we look at the electronegativity values, okay, for oxygen, and we see the oxygen is around 3.5, right? And for hydrogen, on this old reference table that I have here, it says 2.1. So I'm thinking it's either 2.1 or 2.2, but let's use 2.1. It's no problem. Okay. Now, once again, electronegativity is ability for you to pull or attract electrons toward yourself in a covalent bond. So if you have a strength of 3.5 versus 2.1, you will win the tug of war. Okay. So these electrons here that are being shared will mostly be drawn towards the oxygen. Okay. So in this bond right here, you have you have oxygen pulling electrons towards itself, okay, with because this is higher electronegativity value. Um, based on that, oxygen will have a partially negative charge, as opposed to hydrogen, which will have a partially positive charge. Now, based on that, you can say this bond right here between the H and O, this bond is a polar bond, okay? Um, likewise, over here, we have H and Br, okay? Now, this hydrogen, as we said before, is approximately 2.1, and the bromine, okay, has a higher electronegativity, so he will win the tug of war, okay? So, since he has a higher electronegativity than hydrogen, we expect that he will have a partial charge that is negative, and this partial charge will be positive for hydrogen, okay? Now, let's look at this guy over here, O2, oxygen, this molecule, O2 molecule. We have a double bond right here, okay? Now, oxygen has electronegativity of about, also of 3.5, all right? And we did that before, right? 3.5 and 3.5, okay? So we have two 3.5s on our hands. So who is going to win the tug of war? Yes, you're right. No one, okay, because they have the um, equal strength, right? So what's going to happen, you will have no partial charge created, okay, in terms of this um, diatomic molecule oxygen. So if your molecule, guys, is diatomic, okay, having the same two atoms, or the two, uh, di two different elements, and um, they have the same electronegativity, your bond, right? The bond polarity, though you have no bond polarity. Okay? Alrighty. And let's move on. Okay. We're looking at CO2, carbon dioxide. Now, carbon has electronegativity around 2.6. 
Okay, and oxygen once again is 3.5. All right, so we expect the pull to go in this direction and in this direction, right? So these oxygens will carry partially negative charge here on the outside, okay? Partially negative, partially negative, all right? So this bond right here, okay, is a polar bond. Likewise, as this bond is a polar bond. Now, so what we're doing on this page, we're kind of bond polarity, okay? Now, last one here, we have carbon tetrafluoride. Now, we have fluorine, which we know from experience in Chem 1. Fluorine has electronegativity of 4.0, the highest value on the table, and carbon is 2. 0.6 so we expect fluorine to win a tug of war right so this fluorine and uh, the carbon this bond right here okay this will have a partially negative charge this fluorine will have partially negative charge and so on okay so all the bonds individual bonds are polar in this molecule okay so that's a, that's a quick look at bond polarity you simply look at the difference in the electronegativity okay if you have electronegativity difference your bond is polar but if you have the same okay electronegativity or your molecule is diatomic you don't expect to have any partial charges okay all right moving on now molecular polarity okay it's related to bond polarity but it's a slight difference we have to look at the symmetry of the molecule to determine overall if it's going to be um, polar or nonpolar okay so we know how to do bond polarity and that's important because that's going to help us determine overall symmetry of the molecule so if we know that the molecule is symmetrical okay we can say that the molecule is nonpolar. And how do we know that? Based on this definition right here. If a molecule has the same charge distribution all around, okay, it's symmetrical, and in turn, it's any symmetrical molecule will be nonpolar. So my memory device for that is Simnon. Simnon. Any symmetrical molecule will be nonpolar. So let's look at water, okay? So we've done it already, right? We know that. This oxygen is winning the tug of war, has a partially negative charge. We know these hydrogens are losing the tug of war and have a partially positive charge. Okay, they have less electronegativity, they're positive, and the guy that um has a higher electronegativity value, he'll be negative. Okay, so we look at the molecule and we look on this side of the molecule, we said it's positive. We look on the upper side of the molecule where the oxygen is, that side is negative. So we don't have the same charge distribution all around the water molecule is asymmetrical okay all right and any asymmetrical molecule folks will be polar okay so we have an asymmetrical molecule on our hands with water so please 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 at the very least know that water is an asymmetrical molecule and it's polar in nature because that's going to help us later on when we get into the behavior and properties of polar and nonpolar molecules okay let's look at co2 now oxygen has a partially negative charge again partially negative charge because he is he has a higher electronegativity than um carbon now what's happening here we have a pull in this way and equally we have a pull in this direction so this molecule is s word this molecule is symmetrical and co2 right just so happens to be non-polar why is it non-polar because it's symmetrical even though its individual bonds are polar the overall symmetry is symmetrical and CO2, carbon dioxide, is nonpolar, okay? So it's all about the symmetry, folks. If it's symmetrical, it's nonpolar. If it's asymmetrical, it would be polar. Okay, so let's look at another one. Let's look at this guy right here. Now, we have chlorines. We have three chlorines. So chlorines, we know, have a higher electronegativity than um, carbon. So chlorine, I'm looking at my reference table, is approximately 3.2 on this old reference table I'm looking at. So he will be partially negative in relation to carbon, which is about 2.6, right? Okay, so these, these guys will be partially negative. Now this hydrogen has a lower, okay, electronegativity than carbon, right? So he will be partially positive in relation to carbon. So what we do now, we look around the molecule. 
we're looking around the molecule, we see that we have negative, negative, negative around here. But on the top here, we have positive, right? So this molecule is, is it asymmetrical or symmetrical? This molecule is asymmetrical, okay? So if we're asked about the polarity of this molecule, we can safely assume that it is polar, all right? How do we know it's polar? Because it's asymmetrical. How do we know it's asymmetrical? Because of the charge distribution. It does not have the same charge distribution all around. Okay, now we're moving on. We're going to look at this molecule in the corner here, CF4, carbon tetrafluoride. We have fluorines all around. We know fluorine has the highest electronegativity there is. So this fluorine will have a partial negative charge, as will this one, and this one, and this one. So now when we look in terms of symmetry, we see that we have negative all around the molecule. So we have the same charge distribution all around so carbon tetrafluoride is symmetrical and for my memory device simnon this carbon tetrafluoride molecule would be non-polar the molecule will be non-polar even though the individual bond is polar so guys when you're doing a test or quiz or whatever and they're asking you about polarity please differentiate and make sure you know whether you're asking about bond polarity versus molecular polarity. Okay, we have two more. Um, HBr is right here. We know, once again, we know bromine has a higher electronegativity. It's a negative, and hydrogen is going to be positive. Now, since we only have one bond right here, the bond polarity and the molecular polarity will be the same thing. This molecule is asymmetrical. The cloud will be more on this side, okay, of the atom. And uh, this HBr molecule will be polar, okay, because it's asymmetrical. All right, and last one is N2. Okay, and N2 should be pretty easy. Okay, you know that nitrogen you have to do the same thing. So no matter what the um, electronegativity is, okay, there will be no partial charge arising because they're pulling in each direction, opposite directions, with the same electro negativity okay so just so happens that nitrogen has a 3.0 electronegativity also 3.0 on this side so this uh molecule is symmetrical there's no charge buildup it's symmetrical it's even distribution and any symmetrical molecule simnon will be non-polar okay so i hope you um got something on this brief video once again we have bond polarity versus molecular polarity for your bond polarity okay in terms of if you're going to create a uh, partial charge you check the difference in electronegativity in terms of molecular polarity you look for the charge distribution all around the molecule if the charge distribution is the same okay your molecule will be symmetrical and simnon then the molecule will be non-polar but if your molecule does not have the same distribution all around it will be polar okay so once again everything is foundational folks you have to go back to your dot structures your your shapes and your polarity okay and work on those guys and be able to assign your your um different charges once again use your reference table it's a tool to help you you have your electronegativity values on it you don't have to memorize them and as always hard work uh plus sacrifice equals success i hope this video was a help and um next video will, will be on the polarity and its properties in terms of polar and non-polar molecules Okay, take care.